five o'clock by my watch, and believe it or not, five o'clock by the 10 o'clock. So I will uh, call our meeting to order this evening. Welcome, everyone. Um, we have a couple of guests over here. Gentlemen, you want to introduce yourselves? Thank you. Um, Elliot Berg and myself, Paul Bosch, we're with the Middlesex Bandstand Committee. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and we have one amendment to the agenda that I'm aware of, which is uh, an executive session to discuss the Bodwin tax appeal, which will happen at the happen at the end of the meeting. Are there any other amendments to the agenda? Okay. Um, so with that, uh, we'll move into our uh, budget workshop. I would suggest, if everybody is willing, since we have the bandstand committee here, that we take up their uh, request first, and then they're welcome to say and listen to our budget deliberations if they wish to. Is that okay with everyone? Okay, gentlemen, you're on. Thank you, we appreciate that. So we are in our, or approaching our, I believe our 17th year of programming. And uh, to, at this point, rather than going over the whole history, we are sponsored by the Middlesex Historical Society. They create a, a 501c3 category through us, through, uh, through association. We are now seeing a summer audience of something over 2,000 people over a six-week program. And we have lifted the floor of the caliber of musicianship that we're bringing into town. And we're getting a lot of great feedback from the community about that and asking us to keep that, that caliber of, of musical presentation happening. So we've begun to include Grammy winners from all over the world. and. It's getting to be quite an elevated program. We have, until now, we've sustained ourselves on a mix of some local business sponsorship, and that continues. Uh, in the last two seasons, we have collected funds at each of the performances, and folks just donate what they can. And that's been helpful. Um, but we're at a point where we are looking at just a larger mix of revenue streams and that brings us to this the select board meeting and the appeal to ask the town to consider a fifteen hundred dollar contribution to the program whether that's in a discussion in this meeting or something that is um, assigned to the town warning for the, the 2023 town meeting uh, that's your prerogative and Ellie thanks to add to that I mean, I just wanted to say that it's the concert series has really become a um, a much anticipated part of the summer in Middlesex, and it's become very intergenerational. So we've got people our age and our kids' age, and now we've got grandchildren running around. If you get to any of the concerts, you know how wonderful it is. Um, and I just passed one comment along from a lifetime Middlesex resident who said that. She is sure that her children, who are both in elementary school at Romney, will never forget the concerts, because they're among the kids who are running around. So everything that we've done there has been um, a result of the generosity of people in the town and businesses. We built the bandstand with volunteer labor and with contributions. We've really tried to stay back from asking for tax dollars um, but the program that we're putting on is a really good one. The cost of booking performers is going up. And we've got some capital expenses that we have to figure in, including replacing the floor of the bandstand. So um, we hope you'll take that all into account. I did want to add one last thing, just to thank you again to the select board for giving us permission to build the shed um, on the site. So that's been super helpful. And just about complete, and it's going to be just a boon to our just facility operation there. So thank you again for allowing that. Great. What what is your total annual budget now? Do you know? We probably work within about ten to well, not more than twelve thousand dollars right now. We're anticipating expanding that again, as as Ellie and I described roughly that the cost of of uh, hiring artists is is going up and uh, we have some 
facilities repairs to do, like the floor. Um, another approach that we're considering taking is um, expanding into the realm of underwriting, which is approaching institutional, uh, well, I won't call them sponsors, I need to call them underwriters. So there's some active conversation with a couple of local banking institutions, and that could be something in a, just a larger realm of contribution. It's not, not established yet, but it's just an active conversation. So it's just to let you know that we're trying to keep irons in a number of fires so that uh, we're not relying on any one entity, Middlesex included. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so the only thing we contribute now is use of the land, obviously. Um, the mowing, we pay the mowing. Do you have any idea how much that amounts to during their roughly? Uh, it falls under the recreation budget. I don't know if you broke that out or not. I think it's like five hundred dollars mm, I think it's I think it's more than that. I think for the whole B BOR, it covers all of that whole thing. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it doesn't we don't break out the just the bandstand portion. No, we don't. Okay. We don't, we don't tap any of the recreation funds. Right. I'm sorry, what? We don't tap any of the recreation no. funds for the bands. No, 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 we, we know. We know, we know, we know. Okay. Board members, thoughts, comments? Um, what percentage of that overall budget uh, do you estimate goes to the artists performers? Probably three quarters. Okay. Do the um, food vendors find it worthwhile to go there? and? It's typically a banner evening for them. Okay. We, the last... Uh, Two seasons, we've been working with a pizza vendor, Woodbelly Pizza, and uh, oh, on at least a couple of occasions, they've shared that they've broken their event sales records. So, okay. um, yeah, they're, they're coming back next year. We got a, yeah. a rousing yes from them about a week ago. So. And do they contribute anything, or their contribution no. is just that well, they show I, up? Actually, I take that back. They, okay. What they do is they they feed the band, they feed the artists. Oh, okay. So they're and that, that's their prerogative. They uh, fire up the oven, and usually the first few pies that come out of the oven, they just bring them down to the to the performers and feed them first before they open for the public. Right. So that's right. a, a good gesture on their part. And, and I found the event to be helpful for, you know, advertising other things that are going on. Like you guys have been generous, like the fire department has come and done fundraisers there in the past, and the energy committee has gone there to share whatever information they're doing, projects they're working on. So it's a nice place for, to see the community in one location at one time, so. And because it's public property, we are, uh, welcoming but also understanding the obligation to allow for things like in, the, in this past season allow politicians to present and you know, kind of work the grounds uh, and that, that went actually quite well. Um, those folks were showing up every single week and they were doing what I would argue was just kind of a respectful working of, of the crowd. Um, there are occasions, not this past summer, but the summer before on one concert we raised uh, about $500 for the fire department. So there, there are things like that that we're happy to do and with the exercise of collecting donations at the performance now, we're able to identify uh, you know, dedicated fundraisers like that. So the request is to include $1,500 and I guess it would be in the recreation budget uh, to support the bandstand. Exactly. And or, and or, uh, we put, we meaning the select board, put an article on the town ballot for the $1,500. Um, to me, um, I think the bandstand is a great thing. $1,500 is a small amount of money. It seems appropriate. I mean, we have a, I have a lot of, <laughs> A lot of money, not a lot of money, but money in our recreational budget, which I would tell you is nowhere near as well spent as that. So from that point of view, I think it's a good thing to do, but I'm interested in other thoughts, if any. I would say if we put it right in the budget, we just have an explanation as yeah. to why the budget you know, went up by 300% or whatever so the, the amount is going to be. Right. Yeah. I'm fine with it going we should probably. We should probably, I don't, can we set it up as a separate line item? 
so it can be tracked. That way, that way you know how much money you've spent and how much is left. Mm -hmm. Probably better than just having it in the in the pot, but we put it under under recreation. Would someone be willing to make that motion? So moved. And would this would this be something that they report back? Uh, manner in which they spent these funds and all that kind of stuff or is this like a, an, an allocation on an annual basis for them to that they're not reporting back on anything I, they're I just think taking we would money. expect the report <coughs> i think that's a, a an understood piece mm -hmm. of it i mean would have to be turned yeah. in for anything to be paid because the money right. will sit in the town so well, for the, so the, the way it would work is you would submit a bill Dorinda would pay the bill. Got it. Okay? So that, in effect, is the report. We're going to know what we're paying. That's, 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 so that'd be if we put it into the, the rec department budget. If it was added as its own article at the end, it would just be an allocation to them for them to do what they want. Is that what you were saying before? No, 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 no. no matter, either, either way, okay. either way, the way the money would be spent was they would, they would submit a bill we didn't and say this it. is... 50% of the cost for this artist or you know whatever whatever it was and we would pay the bill directly we wouldn't give you the money so we would send the check to the artist or the vendor no, unless they could just bill us can't they just say well I thought this is for repairs on the bandstand not for isn't this for repairs it's, like it, it, it could be I think what what we're I think we're talking about Operating, just, just operating. operating. Just, just operating. Sure. Okay. Well, and, and we're more than happy to submit a, a bill. I'm not sure we would have the artist submit a bill. We would, right. We would get a, an invoice from the artist, and we would, or we would. I mean, Bennett does sound. And the, I think it might be, uh, that, and that's where my thinking would go: is that the the gentleman that does the sound reinforcement for us for the whole summer. His his line item for the season is eighteen hundred dollars. The fifteen hundred from Middlesex would offset the lion's share of that, and that that would be a, a specific an easy invoice. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. So for a sense we just, just want to be you know just keeping the money in town. For we're obviously for a local. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're we're ultimately accountable, so we want to be sure where the money goes. Basically. So we'll 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 pledge the present a, a specific invoice and I'm, I'm betting that this is the category that we would yeah. That would be an easy one to yeah. Yeah. take yeah, care of the whole use thing. That that one then. Yeah. yeah. How will we remember, because um, Mitch hasn't re presented his he budget hasn't yet. Done his budget yet. So we'll need to remember to I put that in there. Got okay. It. Um, yeah. Okay, so it was moved by Phil. Who seconded it? I'll second it. Liz seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh. Any opposed? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you so Thank much. You. Appreciate it. You guys have been terrific. So, just one little thing to keep in mind is this money is available as of July 1st, but not before. That's Our perfect. fiscal year okay. starts July 1st. Yeah, right. we, we, the first concert is July 5th. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. But don't give us a bill in March. We'll okay. get paid. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> the other thing you might want to keep in mind, if you used it towards repairing the floor or something like that, the town is tax exempt. So you would be safe if we paid those kind of bills, you wouldn't be paying sales tax on any of those uh -huh. that product used. So you shouldn't be paying if you're part of the historical, historical right. society. But if you're part of the historical society, you shouldn't right. be paying tax on anyways, yeah, but we're, yeah, we're not taxed. You're not okay. being taxed. Okay. okay. Thank you for that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming down. It's our pleasure. Okay. So, highway department budget presentation. Always an exciting. It's so big. Time of year. You mean money wise? Pages and money wise. <laughs> Didn't it used to be hand <laughs> we're in the We're in the new world we're now. We're in the then. new age. Don't be critical. <laughs> I like that. I guess, I guess my question uh, first would be, do we want to just talk about what items have changed? I would so, talk about the big items. Yeah. I mean, the, item, the items that are, are, are zero funded unless a board member has a question. Well, that's kind um, of where I was going. I don't think we need to spend a lot of time talking about those, but... Uh, 
you know, the road gravel, the yeah. tire chains, the, I, I checked off five or six things there. Subcontracted services and mud season mitigation, yep. those are the big ones, I yep. think. Yep. So I guess, I guess to start off um, with tire chains, I took that number as uh, what we have spent in the past on tire chains. This is a new line item that I had added because... So before, where has it been included before during the... God only knows. Parts, I mean, equipment. It was all it's in the highway budget like somewhere. It, 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 it was all over the place. Yeah. As far as I was concerned. Okay. There was no consistency to, because everybody coded it differently. Okay. Okay. Um, so that was, that was the, uh, the reasoning for that number. Um, the gravel. So we originally budgeted 40000 for gravel. Um, I increased that sixty to a hundred thousand and the reason the, the reasoning behind that was our roads are lacking in gravel and the only way to to really address that is put some more to it my thought process behind that would be to focus on the main arteries in town and the real bad spots and work away from that and um, so yeah. how much how much will that extra amount of money do? I would have to say that would cover a good portion of, of the main arteries and that helps with mud? Well, it's going to help to some extent, but it also is going to help with, like on West Hill, with all the, the sliminess and the rain. Right, you that's know. what I mean. That yeah, and then just the conditions themselves. drainage, because you can put a crown on the road, you're going to bury up. Yeah, there's so many sections of the road that you can't put on Things like that. Oh. Um, I did add, well, some money on oil recycling because there was no money in that whatsoever and when we change our oil we have it in a barrel but it needs to be pumped out and recycled so um, that was based off from one pump out a year I don't know how much they pump it out I'm assuming at least once a year I'm sorry where is that line on that would be under equipment maintenance or oil dollars. recycling yeah, the the one down from the bottom of that. got it yep um, contracted services. Uh, that there, I added. It was originally funded for twenty thousand. I added uh, fifty thousand to that because of the price of the salt, the new salt shed. If we were to try to budget for that, I figured that would be where it would be. Where are you? On subcontracted services. What do you mean you added salt shed? I had yep. thirty-six thousand on that. Is that? Did you mm -hmm. have it in as fifty? Yeah, maybe I wrote the wrong number. So you added 30. I'm, I'm showing 40,000, so an increase of $26,000. Because I put it to 70. You put. I'm showing 46,000. Well, then I don't know what happened. He I wants don't know to what happened. He's printing the same page out. No, because <laughs> that's what I had off the thing that you had sent me. What are you saying? Oh. I think he wants yeah. it to be 70. Yeah, yes. I'm seeing a total of in, total increase of 26 to yeah. 46. So you want yeah. it was, I wonder why it was changed. So you want it 70,000? That's what I was thinking, yeah. Huh, that's not So does this have, is this the same money that you put into the CIP request to the budget committee for the for the Schultz shed? It was like, yeah. it was 86 total. Yeah, well, and then we, we already pad, paid for the, the uh, pad of like 14 or yeah. whatever. So I figured, took that out of it. Okay. So, so what's it supposed to be? I put it at seventy total. Total of seventy. Yes. Hmm. Okay. So an increase of fifty. Is that what, well? That's the form that I forwarded to Sarah. So well, I don't know why, it, sure but it wasn't. Don't it's the same one I printed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Changing the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, uh, no, no, this is terrible enough as it is for me. <laughs> um, so is that the only thing that that line item contains in it, is the remaining funding needed for the salt shed? That was what I was planning on, yep. 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 Um, I, I increased our gas and diesel, obviously, just because of the times we're in. Quick question, is our electricity not getting coded properly? That the year-to-date is only 250? No, I don't, it just ignore, ignore those numbers. The year-to-date numbers are not correct. Okay. Because I, 
I did a separate sheet so that I wouldn't be sending out okay. my whole gotcha. gamut of pages for nothing. Um, under highway wages, I was asking for 5.9% uh, based on the cost of living for this year. So that's going to be, that's ultimately going to be part of the bigger discussion, yep, which typically, that's fine. Just typically we have in January, and that's something uh, I do want to, once, once we're finished, I want to just talk a little bit about that, because whereas for years and years and years I was involved, actively involved in the business community, and I had a pretty good idea what other organizations were doing and recommending, and now I don't. So I just want to be careful that we don't yep. make an error on the upside or the downside. Correct when we do that that's but fine. anyway that's yeah, fine for a flood number yeah, yep. so. uh the other big one was under paving and construction so um i added that 190 198 thousand that is the difference after our two hundred thousand dollar grant we were awarded for repaving shady road paving and construction yep i didn't have anything for that I don't see anything there. Either. Wasn't that on the original sheet you sent me? What the heck? I don't want to tell you. <laughs> I printed so, it out the same day. But how much is that? 198. It might have sent, been something that you sent off before you made save, uh, save to the worksheet you were working on. Maybe. Maybe I, maybe I did the save button. 198,000. Yes. yes. That's the difference of uh, the cost for after the grant. Well, we do still have money in the budget, and that's what we were originally going to use. Okay, well, I... But, so what we can, I mean, we can put plug these numbers in, but then we should probably go back and when we hack this up, because there's still um, money in the paving budget. Is there, I don't know what, yeah. yeah, I don't know what that was, so I just... Okay. When you say the paving budget, you mean the paving, paving fund. fund? Paving fund, right. fund. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had no idea what was in it, so I just plugged those numbers in. Because that's what okay. the cost so, is. All right. Um, I did increase, with while with the uh, road gravel, I did increase the ditching stone just because the cost of that has gone up as well. Um, Where does that fall on the construction? Uh, construction, correct, yep. Okay. Some of that might be mitigated because we're going to put in a, for a grant, right? Yes, we are. We are going to, we are going to for, for grants first for, a grant for road, became available road for road the road. Vermont Regional Planning. I saw that. And yep. so we applied for it, and it's, uh, deadlines are 16. Yep. Yep. So we that did. could be. Did. Yeah, that could be. But I figured I'd put it in anyway just because. Um, so. It's probably not the right line item, but under mid mud season mitigation, I, I put that seventy-five thousand in there just because that's what was spent on stone last year for our mud season. Isn't that is that understood? Is it the amount that was spent on it? Seventy-six. No, seventy-six. Right. Okay. Um, so that's why I put that there, so that if we have another mud season like that, we can apply stone. That, it's really the best way to handle. It mud in the springtime is filled the mud with clean stone. Okay, so now we're up to... <laughs> what does it add up to now with this? Well, this numbers? we've increased I mean, these I'm numbers. I'm very concerned about... Can, tomorrow, can you send me a new sheet? Yeah, it's almost 300,000. Completely yeah. different than... Because overall you said you had like a 25% budget increase? Oh, no, no. no. Okay. No, oh, okay. Gonna... Somebody said that. You told me that. You told well, me that's that. what it says here, 25.4. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know, why, I must, I don't know how, how I did that. I don't know how, what happened, but I thought I'm I printed up it out to, the same day I sent it. Yeah, but that, that number is I'm off like up by 276,000. Oh, yeah, no, I got 53. He's got 53. Yeah, so. Increase. Um, yeah. Well, I didn't expect yeah, he just put his wish list. His wish list. <laughs> yeah. So prepare for changes. Oh, I know that. Yeah. So I mean, you know, one the one thing for me is we're putting th that extra money into gravel. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we knock out the seventy-five thousand for mud season mitigation. But let's let's see how it all goes. But I don't think we can tolerate a fifty-three percent increase. That. 
I'm not saying it isn't all good stuff. No, I, I'm not. Lay I'm out not, the cost. I'm, not, I'm just, that's what it is, and we go from there. We understood that when we did that. Yeah. yeah, and I think, you know, for me, you know, just with the work that I'm doing on the CIP and whatnot, you know, some of these things like this gravel mm -hmm. uh, budget, you know, the $100,000, you know, if that's going to be like a, a reoccurring maintenance type thing, those are the t exact type of things that, in my mind, you know, we should get in on that CIP. So every every five years, if it's a hundred thousand dollars that we need to put into gravel to maintain these right. roads, you know, that's exactly what the town folks want to know about. You know, those upcoming charges, and it's a huge list. You know, I, I think that you know, just I don't know how how much anybody's looked at that, but there's a lot of stuff on there and, and there's a lot of capital expense coming our way, so. I think um, it would be worthwhile at town meeting, um, if we have one, <laughs> that the budget committee does some sort of presentation or at least does some sort of handout so that people know what's going on. So they know we're using it, right? And Hear that, Mark? Thinking about it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. You know, this is great information to have. I think it's going to have to change. Um, but how much it's going to have to change, we'll, we'll see. How I much mean, in grants do you um, hope that you're going to have? Well, they're all hard 20, to tell. They're all like uh, matches. Right, but how much? Um, how much you're asking? How much are you asking for for the grant? Like, you, you just applied for one, I heard? No, I'm applying for one. I yeah, how much is that? Oh, okay. Right, because I only have one grant right now. Yep. That Sarah has a work. question. So yeah, Sarah. I just want to—I just want to make sure I heard that right. Adding the new numbers in for uh, Eric would be a 53% increase in the budget. Is that right? Because I've got 24% on this, but I don't yes. know. 53.8. 53.8. 53. We have a different sheet then. I don't right. know what happened there. Okay. Okay. I was scratching my head. Hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say pa and throw what the Frenchman says. Yes. Maybe. So, you know, the other thing to think about is, and I hate to even say this word, but, you know, maybe some of this we should borrow the money and spread it out over a few years. Maybe. I just, there's that, that's there's a, no trucks being purchased this next year? No truck purchase. I think we have trucks out a couple of years. We based on the CIP. Mm -hmm. yeah. excavator, excavator was the next big item, I believe. Yeah. What is? Uh, the excavator right. was the next big item coming up on the CIP. 24, yeah. right? What's that? 2025. Uh, I'd have to refer back to Mark 20. on that. But Maybe Mark, was that a, a the excavator replacement? Did that uh, come up in 24? I thought we put a lot more. Do you remember that? Uh, the excavator. Is either it's either 2023 20, or 2024. 20, it's it's current. Oh, we did like 20,000. Yeah, I thought it was 24, but uh, oh, right. yes, yeah, we can we can look at that, um, and I can get back to folks on that if it lasts that long. <laughs> Eric, I thought we put like twenty thousand dollars in our paving fund every year. 30K every year, and then oh, we cut it back last year. Yeah, we that's did. the numbers yeah. that I had for last this Okay, year. so yeah. do we do we want to keep it cutting back? Like, it, isn't the purpose of doing the paving fund because in 10 years we're going to need to pave again? Right. Well, and more, that's 300. Half, yes. Yeah. Right, so shouldn't it be 30,000? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was brought down. I just know that the numbers are yeah. good. And I'm only showing $2,000. Yeah, in there. right. That should be adjusted to 30. Mm -hmm. So there we Maybe. go, 50, 60 percent increase there. <laughs> so what was that? What was that? What, what did you adjust? Paving the, fund. The paving fund paving should fund. go back to thirty thousand. Or maybe twenty. Well. But it shouldn't be two. It shouldn't be two, right? Yeah, I just thought it was going to, but I was like, yeah. And what's our bridge in middle? Oh, where, where's the bridge in middle? Six? We don't want a wood road. Sorry, what? The bridge in middle six, a oh, wood road. Right. Yeah, there's two. Yeah. yeah. Victor made a, an aside here as we were talking about the excavator, and he kind of mumbled if it lasts that long. And I was, I was trying to recall. I thought we had some discussion about that needing some significant repair, a water yeah, carriage, probably. repair. Yeah, I'm assuming. On your carriage is what we talked about. Okay. So well, is it is it realistic? Is it? Huh? Is, did you guys talk about that last year? Last year. Yeah. I, I believe yeah, because there was a we talked about trade in, and they gave us a trade in value that was. 
there was a difference of like thirty thousand dollars if my memory serves me correct based on if the repairs that they would expect to be made were made prior to that there was like a thirty thousand dollar difference in the value of that piece of equipment gotcha they based on like whether that. those repairs were completed or not okay they don't like them without an undercarriage no no it's, it's pretty important, important. I have a couple questions. Chloride last year we spent thirty-three thousand and we budgeted twenty-three. We spent thirty-three on it last year. Last year. Mm -hmm. And we budgeted twenty-three for the current year. And that's probably why we picked up twenty-three thousand on that one. But we did spend thirty-three thousand in the year before. Um that's but we've only spent he said not to follow it that. Oh, not that. follow no, the year-to-date year numbers? That should be accurate because that's all I've had bills for at the time I did um, this. Yeah, so to date we've spent 10 k Yeah. And what we do that during the summer, right? Correct. Yes. So we probably won't do it well, much until before. July and then it'll go It'll be the next money. year. Then it'll go to new money. Well, yeah. It'll go into this budget that you're working on. Right. I just we had but you have 23 allocated, so... Mm -hmm. That looks like a good number. I think we'll be very close to it. Okay. My other question that stood out was um, that was a real big one. Was culverts? We spent th almost thirty-two thousand dollars last year on culverts. Right. And we still have a bunch. Of okay. So I just want to make sure yeah. that. That was also because we did all the. Culverts on Center Road, right? Right. So that I, was an exceptional. We still have a decent inventory on. Okay. That. I just wanted those were two big discrepancies. That's why I didn't yeah. those because I figured we still. Like, yeah. So just for just for, you know. Thinking, thanks. The salt shed would be one thing that would be appropriate to borrow money for. Yeah. Pay it off over. Five years, ten years, whatever. I mean, we 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 obviously can't take all this in one year. We'll 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 peg the bell like we've never pegged the bell. Um, so I think we have to look at some of that stuff. The the stone and the gravel is going to be more of a right. recurring so, cost, but the salt shed. Are you going to be one? That's a one. Yeah. Good. Not here, but when we I might be here at some point, but you gotta come here tomorrow. I think I do now. <laughs> but I guess, I guess, and, and believe me, that, I'm not saying that gets us there. But, but just thinking quickly about this financing, the salt shed, and maybe, maybe, some other things. Uh, and as much as it pains me to say that, put a put a spike in the seventy-five thousand for mud season mitigation, and just. You know, we'll get it out of we'll get it out of winter maintenance or summer maintenance or where we have to take it from, like we have in the in the past. In the past, I mean, if we if we if we get the major arteries resurfaced, that is a big project for one year. I think. Can I can I say one other thing on sure. the salt shed? Um, you know, I uh, I attended a, a session that the governor put on yesterday. Uh, talking about ARPA money with a yep. bunch of the different department heads uh, through the municipalities, and I think that you know it would it would be beneficial for us to reach out to those folks to talk specifically about something like that that may fall into you know one of their pots of bucket, um, uh, and then just see if there's opportunities for us to to use some of the state ARPA money um, to help with stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe they also said that things like catching up on deferred road maintenance and things like that could potentially be included in that yeah. too. So, so I think I think just taking some of this some of these big ticket items away, you know, the, even stuff like the, the uh, you know ditching stone and, mm -hmm. and some of the gravel, the salt shed, if we could if we could connect with some folks there and, um, you know, maybe get a little bit of a direction of, of who specifically to talk to, um, you know, they'll point us in the right direction. So, um, and I believe, excuse me, I, I believe uh, 
I'm sorry, I have to take this, excuse me. Hello, Peter. Julie Moore um, from a &R was over there. She may have some stuff that that she would be able to connect you with. If he doesn't come. And there were some, uh, I can't remember the lady's name, but uh, there was another um, lady there that I was thinking about when, when I heard her talking. Um, but uh, yeah. they're, definitely, they're definitely looking for ways to spend, I think they received like, one point oh four billion dollars to push out. Well, I can um, help them. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would the assault Sorry about would that. actually okay? qualify under our offer funds too if we're spending. Yeah. Well, well, that's that. that's what I was about to say. We had we had some of these items, I believe, on mm -hmm. our on our our mm -hmm. wish list, like mud season mitigation. Yeah. I don't think you hung up. No. Nope. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I heard someone talk. Okay. Maybe not. I don't know. Um. Anyway, we've got some more. We've got some work to do. Clearly, got some work to do. We, we look at you're looking at that hundred thousand dollars, and we talked it over. And, uh, I don't think we're going to put a foot of gravel on for. Uh, no, no. I think you have to. I just. All I'm doing is just talking and trying to kind of explain how this it goes here. Uh, in our opinion, is that uh, gravel is what if you're buying it by the yard out of uh, the, uh, the the granite stuff out of uh, South Barry is what 15 was like 15 a yard. Um, whereas if you buy it out of the scales like Northeast, it's more like 20. Because you've got the, you've got the weight factor. They sell it by ton. The other people sell it by yard. Um, but with that said, um, we can't truck it all with our trucks, and 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 we're hiring. You know, when we hire trucks, we're hiring triaxles. They carry more. Mm -hmm. uh, they carry it easier. So that I th I believe with the cost of diesel fuel and stuff right now is going to cost us close to thirty bucks a yard. I mean, it's going to cost us another Deliver. 15, so it's going to be like 30, 31, too. Mm, yeah. Bucks a yard, so uh, you're not buying as much gravel as you think you are for the $100,000. I mean, but you oh, I, I get it. I'm just, okay. I, yeah, no, you know, I just, ultimately, ultimately, what this whole process comes down to, and the, and the highway budget is always the big nut that yeah, we have yeah, to deal yeah. with. Yeah. It's two thirds or three quarters of the, of the money. And, that's probably before you count in buying trucks and other things we have to buy. So, you know, here's where we have to manage between the highway payroll and construction costs and maintenance costs and everything else, where we have to manage our budget. And, you know, the question for me always comes down to, and we've had no discussion so far, I don't know if the budget committee has, in terms of an expectation of what we're trying to meet as a, as a budget increase, but uh, certainly it isn't 58%. Can't be. They, you, you, the, the other part of what that, that getting that gravel is too, that we don't, we don't put that down, but we're, you know, like on McCullough Hill Road, which lasted pretty good for a few years, now it's getting so that it's been turned over enough, it's been sanded enough. When you put sand on top of your, of your gravel, it, it, uh, it deteriorates your gravel. You don't have gravel. I mean, like we've said that you know we could probably get away with you know less material maybe five four five but that's all they had up there is four or five inches mm -hmm. on that and it held up pretty good if you've got good gravel you can you it'll hold you through the through that mud season you have no mud season in, on the last last two three years on McCullough Hill with that gravel Victor, I'm not I'm not disagreeing no, with no, you no, at I all. Mean, I'm just I, explaining the one thing I would say, the one thing I would say is and you know this is where we this is where we walk on eggs a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, is I would rather do a shorter section of the road and do it correctly than well, do that's, it. That's what we're telling you. Than doing it half baked and have it 
not be the right thing to do. And I use that slate as a perfect example of that. But anyway. We're not talking about slate. No, I know. I was just saying mistakes of the past or, yeah. or whatever. We thought we were saving money by using that slate instead of good gravel, and I think we paid for it in the end. But I don't, I don't think we're talking about saving money. We're talking about what we want to do. No, no, I get it. I get it. But all I'm saying is when we look at managing the budget request yep. and what we need to try and accomplish, what's reasonable to present to the voters, and, you know, we need what, to make what, that decision in a collaborative way. I'm not, I'm not suggesting we're going to... The, the budget committee or the select board is going to ram a number down anybody's throat. But I think we have to work out what we think is the right is the right compromise. Well, the elephant in the room, Peter, with the, you you know it, is I mean, a hundred thousand uh, dollars. Well, if you explain it, I think will fly, or somewhere in there, you know, seventy seventy five. I mean, we don't have any problem passing special articles that are more as. In that, in that. It's not the hundred thousand; it's the three hundred thousand yeah. that I'm worried about. Yeah. And and you know, I, the, the the other the other thing to think about is, and I'm not ready to suggest we do this, but you know, we can support a special article for that, right? And say, okay, this is a one-shot deal. We really need to do this. Yes, it's extra money. Here it is. What do you think, voters? That's yeah. Right. So the problem that I see with that is it's. I don't feel like it is a one-shot deal. No, it deal. isn't a one-shot no, deal. It's a, I, it isn't. You know, I, the work that we've been doing on the budget committee, you know, looking at the long term here, you know, there are significant costs coming down the road. Correct. And at some point, we need to make a change and we need to start, start you know, whether it's saving or borrowing or whatnot, you know, there, that's a tough conversation that I think this board has in front of them because there's, there's huge capital expenditures coming, and and to try to take out some of the swings and year-to-year -year changes within the budgets, right. at some point we need to make that first step, and we need to start, you know, um, putting in some money on an annual basis into these funds. So this this gravel, for example, say it's not a hundred thousand, but we start putting fifty in a year right. to make sure we're maintaining the roads long term. If we get to a year and we don't have to expend that fifty thousand dollars, then you know that could potentially offset some other cost, whether it's fi the the amount that we need to finance for a truck. So instead of having to finance, you know, two hundred thousand dollars or two hundred fifty thousand dollars, like we just did on this last truck, right? Maybe there's a hundred thousand dollars sitting in this CIP that everybody's been you know, talking about forever that helps buy down the amount of, you know, call it a down payment, if you will, right. that, that helps us take out some of the, some of the extreme peaks and valleys of, of this year to year change. Um, and that's going to be a tough conversation because on top of this already large request, the highway department has some pretty significant expenses coming up for equipment. So, I mean, it's, I just want everybody to be prepared. We're going to have to do some work and we're going to have to have some tough conversations because I think the the time of trying to hold a budget to, and I don't know, you can you can tell me where we were always 3%. trying to hold it to, but if it was 3 to 5% increase or something. Days are over. I I think to prepare ourselves for the long term, I think we need to look beyond that. Randy, I don't disagree with you. I mean, I'm I'm I and I have no idea what the situation is with the schools, but I've heard some really scary numbers. So there's, you know, there's two thirds of there's two thirds of our tax bill right there, and then there's then there's the numbers we're looking at here. I mean, I think we're I think we're in the, the realm of uh, double digits before we even blink right. um, between between cost of living increases, salary increase, you know, everything, yeah. um, and maybe more. I just I just want to be sure that we do it in the most thoughtful way we can and we are ready to do a good job of explaining it to the voters Absolutely. because that's what it's going to take. If we can create the best budget in the world. If it doesn't pass, we're nowhere. Yep. So, anyway. Does anyone know, this is sort of changing the subject, but I've always been curious, how does a place like New Hampshire, for example, that has mostly paved roads, right, for their sort of back roads, how do they pay for that in these small towns of paved roads? 
Is it the taxpayers in South Spain, or does the state? So they just say that again. How they how they pay for their paved roads in these rural areas? So I know in New York State, which I'm pretty familiar with as a property owner in New York State, the counties there's big county government in New York, and they do all the paving and road maintenance. Towns do plowing. They do you know, some stuff, but the big projects are all done by the county, and there's a county tax, and it's not cheap. New Hampshire, New Hampshire um, um, has been doing it, and, they, and let's face it, I mean, they have a greater tax base than we do. Yeah. They generate a lot more money, they generate a lot of, the other thing is, in general, this is a general statement, especially, in, you know, from, you know, two-thirds down to the Massachusetts border, uh, the soil, in the you know the, the native soil is not conducive to uh, uh, freeze thaw as um, as we are. I mean, we have nothing but a bunch of mud over ledge, and then we try to pave <laughs> pool gravel over it. <laughs> so it's a different topography. Everything. Correct. And they're yeah. also collecting tolls on their highways still there to help pay yeah. for the highway budget. Yeah, yeah. yeah they do have that. tolls. Huh? You suggested that? <laughs> no, but that's, that's a good idea. That's how they cover, you know, some of it. That's for sure. I don't know how much yeah. it covers, but um, the other thing that's not showing here is we're going to have probably somewhere in the ballpark of twenty thousand dollar debt service increase for the new truck yeah. that was done sure. in this year yeah. we're working on. So that's. Uh, Another thing, I haven't gotten the uh, paperwork on it yet. Yeah. How old is Well, I also have sort of started to explore, this is not a big revenue serv uh, uh, surplus at all, but just looking to see what, what we have for Airbnbs, because that increases the traffic as well. And, you know, our other towns, especially ones that are more tourist towns, they must, I don't, I imagine some municipalities have an Airbnb tax um, for short-term rentals. I don't think we have enough Airbnbs in Middlesex. I think we probably have a dozen, but probably something a dozen we don't know about. And then it doesn't, yeah. there's yeah. a lot that's going on under the right. table. Well. But that's a use of our roads that increases our traffic that we're not getting compensated for. If we all bought helicopters, we wouldn't need these roads. <laughs> Battery-powered helicopters. <clears throat> there you go. Well, we've got some we've got some real work to do on this, and uh, well, I, I, I appreciate the numbers. Hope it, it helps start a conversation. I'd say it's already started the conversation. Can we get a refreshed copy with well, the new numbers? I will do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank I you. just wanted to see what it. Yeah. yeah. No. And we'll talk I about it again. I don't know what happened meeting. between then and We're now. Just, just told me not to fall out of the chair, and I said, "Well, that's not too bad." <laughs> so just, well, just, like just transitioning into the other topic for a minute. What are what are people thinking about pay increases? Percent seems a little high. Can can I just spit something out that's been on my mind about sure. pay increases and and just yep. how we look at that? Yep. Um, I know historically it's just been all lumped together, right? Cost of living adjustment, pay increases, and and all of that. Um, I know the world that I operate in, and some of my the businesses that I partner with. Um, done slightly different, and I I welcome feedback uh, from the board on this. But I personally love the idea of separating out a cost of living adjustment versus uh, uh, an adjustment in salary based on performance. Mary. And um, in some of the businesses that I partner with, um, you know they. They offer a cost of living to all employees, and let's just say that's you know one and a half percent, two percent, whatever the number is. And then instead of saying, okay, we're going to offer you a four percent or five percent, you know, adjustment in pay for everybody, the department heads are then given a specific amount of money to allocate amongst their staff, and they base that off from. Um, 
you know, the performance of the staff. And we're, we're pretty small here. We don't have a lot of employees. So I, know, I do realize that that makes a bigger difference at larger, um, uh, larger employers. But um, it's something that's been on my mind. And, and I would entertain feedback from, from you all as to, you know, thoughts about changing how we do that. So I would say a couple of things. First of all, over the years, I've tried both methods, and I'm well aware of the strengths and weaknesses of both of them and the problems they create. The problem I can see in particular this year is, you know, all you hear in the press every day is that the cost of living is eight, nine, you know, whatever it is percent. Well, you know, if, if, we're, gonna, if we're gonna try and do that in one year, there's nothing for performance increases. Sure. So, you know, so how does that work? And ultimately, you know, it, it always sounds it always sounds great to reward the better employees, but hate and dissension. It's 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 a challenging thing to do is all I'm saying. And especially in a small organization where sooner or later, I mean everybody on the road crew knows what everybody on the road crew makes, you know, whether they pass their pay stubs around or, or whatever. So there's no there's no secrets about what people make, and it's the goodwill you create by, by, you know, enhancing the pay for an extra good employee, worse the bad will that you get for maybe not the bad employee, but the marginal employee who, who doesn't get the pay raise. So anyway, it's I, I think it's a good a good conversation to have. I'm particularly concerned focusing on this year about, you know what the total cost is, however you parse it out. And I think it's going to be a big cost. And, you know, I'm really sorry. I should turn the damn thing off. Um, anyway, I, I, don't disagree with, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I'm just saying it creates challenges, too. Absolutely. I recognize that. Um, and, and part of my uh, my thinking throughout this process is, you know, we're, I don't know about the town and what we're facing for, you know, health care increases and all of that kind of stuff, but, you know, the, um, you know, I know I can speak for, you know, some of the other places are, that I've heard are experiencing 20 to 30 percent jumps in premiums for health care. Um, it's huge. So I don't know, have you heard anything about our expect? I think it's 13 percent. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, we're on the low end of that, believe it or not, but it's still in a, a big in, a, in a place where you know we we cover that cost for our employees. You know, so when we start thinking about cost of living adjustments and and everything else, you know, that needs to be taken into consideration as well as the fact that you know as the town picks up that cost, that cost isn't being passed on to their employees. They don't need the same significant adjustment that somebody who, if the town was passing on that cost directly to the employee, might, might need to see. Right. Um, so again, you know, and, and this is a tough subject, and, and I've been trying to put a little bit of thought into it when I saw that it was on the agenda. Um, you know, we made some fairly significant market adjustment, you know, within this last year. Um, to, to get ourselves out of a point where we were, we were be, being competitive again um, in this market. And I recognize that we don't want to step backwards from that, but I want to be careful in the expectations that folks have coming forward as we're absorbing you know, these healthcare costs and everything else. And ex especially after coming, you know, some of those increases were 20% increases in pay and then July 1, there was another 5% on top of that. So I just want to recognize right. that there were significant changes in, in pay within the last you know, year and six months. But even since then, the cost of living has gone through the roof. Yeah. Sure. So yeah. you know, you know I, can, I, can, I can just tell you, and I, and I don't know what kind of feedback of any or any expectation you've heard, Eric, from the, from the road crew, but you can bet they're looking at those cost of living numbers, which are in the in the paper and on the TV every day. And whether you know, depending on which cost of living numbers you take, those can be higher or lower by a significant amount. But the fact of the matter is, every time you pull up at the gas pump or go to the grocery store, you know what the cost of living increase is. It's pretty substantial. 
Yeah, so I mean, it's noted right here, eight point seven percent is what they used for you know based on that that cost of living and you know um, everybody. Well, I don't know who's I don't know whose number the eight point seven is, but I've heard. Yeah. So they're, they're, the numbers are all over the place, but the low end of the numbers is in the six to seven percent range, and the high end of the numbers is in the twelve percent range. So anyway, gallon diesel fuel. It ain't. It ain't eight percent. Anyway, we all need to be thinking about how we how we parse it out and how we distribute it. Is one question. Randy's question, good question, but ultimately, what it amounts to is what's the why don't you turn it off? This is Rob Halpert. Oh. Let me just let me just talk to him. Rob. Peter, how you doing? That's okay. We're right in the middle of our meeting. Um, and we haven't yet taken up the uh, we're gonna have an executive session at the end of the meeting to discuss uh, discuss. So the question is what the what the magic number is. Remember you're on being recorded, Peter. Um, uh, Randy, what's that? Okay, perfect. Okay, I'll get back to you. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Yeah, liability. Yeah. Um, insurance. Yeah. You want a percentage? Like, no, I know what the percentage oh, is. Oh, okay. I'm looking at our percentage. It seems so much higher. The towns. Yeah. What are you looking at? Just the, what um, what's in the the fringe? You know, yeah, the I mean, you've got to that... you've got to remember that we're we're paying a hundred percent of all the health care costs here. Oh, we yeah. don't do that at work. Yeah. So that's going to make a significant. A significant difference on a percentage basis. Well, and the other thing, the other thing to remember is that we pay a higher workers' comp rate because, yeah, because they're big. they're row, they're not office workers, they're yeah. row crew. He, he pays. Yeah, I pay a he, yeah, pays you a construction yeah. rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I still think it's valuable too. I don't know if we ever did this, which was to present. My husband gets one every year, a letter saying what his value is. Right, that includes mm -hmm. everything. We talked, about, uh, we talked about it. I've got the format all done. I just, I think we did it July one, didn't we? We did not send them out, um, and I mean we should have, but I, I don't think it should be. I don't know if it's something that should be given to department heads to s discuss with their groups, or you know, I just felt it shouldn't have come from the treasurer. Uh, well, it can come. It can come from the select. I mean, the, the problem with department heads is we really only got one department head. There he, there he sits, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just think we we, we implemented that years ago at Noel Johnson Insurance, and everybody got a sheet once a year. And yes, you had a chance to discuss it at your review, but you know we don't do we don't do formal reviews. Right. Right. We should, should probably, or, or don't call them reviews, call them employee meetings once a year. I don't know. But yeah, I thought we'd done that. I'm sorry we didn't do it, because I, I would have sent it out from the, from the select board. But anyway, I, I, I think we need to move on from this, uh, from this subject tonight. We know we've got real work to do. When We have to finalize this the end of January, correct, Dorinda, Sarah? Right, our second meeting in January. It's got to be final. Second meeting in January. So we have, we have one more meeting in December and two in, two in January. Well, yes. We do benefit from the fact that this is the latest town meeting we have. <laughs> Thank so you for that. More time. Thank you so for that. We basically have two meetings that to discuss it because you have to really pass it at the third. So, right, but I mean, we can we can discuss it before right. somebody makes the motion. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we don't have a lot of. We don't have a lot of playroom. We don't have a lot of playroom. Um. I'm just gonna wait till we talk about that. Actually, likely. Okay. Oh, it's six o'clock. I know. Um. Sarah? Yes. Um, we had talked about getting the budget committee on the agenda for 
a meeting late in the process? Is it the, is it the 20th? Is that what we determined? I don't, I don't think there was any determination. I okay. Think was, I think you guys were talking about um, bringing the budget committee and done at, after all of this was done to have a conversation about, well, what do you think? And also talk about the capital improvement. Well, I think, I think when, I mean, I'm just thinking out loud, but I would think the first meeting in January. I mean, the choices are second meeting in December, first meeting in January. First meeting in January, as Dorinda just said, is when we've got to really get our arms around this and decide what we're going to do. Yeah, so I think, I think the, uh, the question in our mind is discussing the CIP. So we've, we're, we're taking the approach that we're, we're gathering the information as folks are presenting their budgets, making, a cha making changes to what you know you take this gravel for example and you know was this something that was going to be you know put into here or is it in a cip you know how that how that conversation goes so i think our recommendation changes based on how the departments put stuff either in on their annual budget or if they're asking for you know it to be included in the cip so um i think before we're we're voting and passing on you know what we're putting into the budgets i think that's seems to me like that's the appropriate time to to get the budget committee to talk about the CIP and what because the select board's going to have to think about what comes out of the CIP for that existing year and gets included in this year's proposal versus what goes into you know following so I think we're talking about two things the CIP information we need sooner rather than later Mm -hmm. okay. No question. So they be okay. The next yeah. But the, the the finalizing the budget part, where the budget committee says, you know, this is how we think you should handle that. This is what we think of, that should be the first meeting in January. Okay. So but yeah, the CIP, we need to get that included in these numbers. I'm only missing very few, and it, it's not a huge impact. Um, I need the planning commission numbers, which. They meet the day after your next select board meeting. So um, what I told Sandy I would do, and I haven't checked to see if she responded, but I told her I would just, you know, plug in the same numbers and use that as a template because it's not going to change too much. Sandy said she'll send you something, a working something before that. Oh, did she? Okay. Yeah. So there you go. I haven't read my emails okay. all day. Okay. And then the other one I'm missing, which is always a small budget, is um, the Recreation Committee and, um, let's see, the zoning budget. So, and those are all pretty much. Well, the big, the big, the big things we need in. to talk about and get our arms around or whatever's in the CIP that isn't in the budget already, okay, whatever that number is, mm -hmm. parse our way through the highway budget and figure out what we're going to do on that and then overall, which affects the highway budget too, but yeah, so it looks like it be. looks like January or December 20th is we, the budget committee should present the CIP, uh, on the 20th to the to yes the I would say so okay yes. Merry Christmas yeah and Ruben is starting off with Ruben Bennett at uh, five o'clock on the 20th yep yeah. boy yeah and we also need to keep in mind that our uh, and we can decide how we're going to do it but uh, I believe we committed that our first meeting in January is going to be at the fire department so right. we can either you know meet there for a while and then come back here or however we're going to do it but we need to think about that yeah because yeah, they're not going to want to sit through the budget process <laughs> so no i don't think they are but i mean we can we can meet down there we can chase them out of their um, <laughs> conference yeah. room i don't know i think it's important to do that but i don't think we need to stay down there that we can take a 15 minute break and come back here maybe and not have what's her name uh -huh, that Olivia. Olivia. We don't need to have Olivia down at the fire department, maybe. No, we don't need Olivia. <laughs> and maybe what I was actually going to suggest is, if it could work, is, well, well, I guess meet with the fire department right at 5 o'clock. It's probably hard to meet before that, right, for people to get there. Yeah. Okay. But we might be planning on a little longer meeting that night. Okay. Moving right along. 
Highway Department, as if we haven't beaten up enough already. And you've got a new truck. <laughs> got a new truck. Oh, and we have our temporary salt shed up with salt in it. So we're good to go. Good. And the new truck, we got the money for the old truck that we were supposed to get. Have yep. we finalized the money during the? Oh, we've had that for two months. Yep. The trade-in money? No. Oh, the, yeah, all the paperwork has been, yeah, we got the trade-in. We got 60 okay, thousand for that. Okay. Um, but we've had the bank loans and. Yeah, I knew that. Yep. Off Thank the top you. of your head, this truck is a, I can go look through the minutes, but it, it's not a Freightliner. It's, it's a Kenworth. It's a Kenworth. 2023. 2023. Kenworth T880. T880. Correct. Were you aware of uh, our new employee? Got a CDL? Oh, Nobody yeah. told us. Yeah, that's that's good news. Great news. That was part of the highway report. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Just, he passed his first time, so we're good to go. Yay. Great. Yeah. And still, everything is good with him. He's. Yeah. That's great. And what's his name again? Dudley Dooley? No. Richard. 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 Dudley Dooley. And he got an increase in pay around the second. We'll get it. Yeah. But it's all set. No, not yet. Not yet. That'll be the next page. It's all taken care of. Correct. Well, good for him. So our now now we just have to hold on to him for a couple of years so we get our money back. I think that'll be easy. He likes it. He likes Eric. He likes he likes. Well, that's work. that's right here, which is just great. Yeah. That's great. Hey, can I raise something for the highway department? Um, Upper Sunnybrook, there's a big boulder there. Does that sound familiar to you? on the edge of the road? Yep. Yes. Diverting water? Yes, I've already looked at it. And there's nothing to do about it right about? I don't know. Bid. <laughs> yep. So what else, gentlemen? Has my sign come in? Not yet. But hopefully this week. You have a sign coming? Liz, Dang, Liz dangerous curve. It's going to say Dang sponsored curve. by Liz Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for the, <laughs> <laughs> the first snowstorm. The first person danger, on the road. Danger well, ahead. Liz says danger, danger ahead. Well, no, listen, I told you Silas put in a granite mailbox stand. Or no, not granite, steel. <laughs> and so if someone hits that, they're not, that thing is not going anywhere. They're going. <laughs> we get it. So. Anything else, Victor? Anything? I think of. We're ready for the snow whenever it comes, right? Yeah. Not anytime soon. Yeah, nothing in the forecast. Huh? It's warm this week. Yeah, ten days at least. Yeah. Wow, that's unfortunate for the ski areas. Yeah, they're yeah, making they're snow not now. Really warming out too bad. They're making it all the time. Yeah. But it's been so warm this. Yeah, it's just it the rain isn't helping the roads at all. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I don't know that one. Okay, deciding whether to hold the March 2023 town meeting in person or at the Romney School or by Australian ballot action possible. I don't think we have any choice, do we? You don't have any choice. I mean, as it stands right now, it has to be in person, right? It stands right now, it has to be in person. There's a possibility, I suppose, that if COVID rates rise, the legislature could be, but I don't think there's any indication that that's going to happen. I'll, I'll, I'll unknow with Susan Clark to see if she has any uh, things to do about that. Hi, Susan. Yeah. How's it going? Good. How are you? All right. You guys are working yeah. hard. Are you eating cookies? No. Or maybe something we'll whale <laughs> Next time. Next time I see you, I'll bring some. No, no, no. We're good. Thank you. Um, so as it stands right now, my understanding is it's going to be an in-person meeting. We're just waiting there. Bye, Eric. Bye, Eric. Yep, bye, Eric. Um, Thanks as, as Sarah just said, and I don't know whether you could hear her, if, if COVID raises its ugly head and the legislature takes some kind of action, then we'll have to do whatever we have to do. But for the time being, it's in person. I don't think we need to vote or anything. I mean, it's pretty much preordained right now. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And certainly, I would say for myself, my preference would be to have an in-person meeting. I think we'd all like to have an in-person meeting. So hopefully that will happen. Yeah, I mean, I think that if it, I mean, if, if I don't, I agree that you might not need to make a decision right now. On the other hand, if there's 
uh, an indication that that's the preference of the select board, that would be helpful in planning. Like, for example, I think it's pretty soon, I, I, you know, I would want to, or, 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 or Sarah, or, you know, sometimes the solutions committee, reach out to the school to start talking with them, making prep um, uh, for, um, you know, childcare. And, um, you know, if we want to have a meal, um, all those things, it's just such a huge bureaucracy. Now it's going to take time to get the wheels churning. So, so well, I think, um, I think we what you should do is presume it's going to be at the school until all of us here differently, unless anybody on the board disagrees. I don't think we need to vote on it or anything like that. We're planning on having town meeting at the school. Yes. That good enough for you? It'll be in the minutes. I mean, the legislature's not has never told people they had to not have it uh, in person. They just gave them the option of not having them in person. Right. So, person so. Sarah? Right. Yes, sir. Do you know anything about the, it does, you said town meeting is on the 7th. That's, the, it's still, this February break goes right up to the town meeting day? Yeah. On that Tuesday? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Just happens to be the last Tuesday of the, First Tuesday of the month. Right. So there it's a late February break or something they're yeah. having. Yeah. Okay. I mean I'm, my my presumption is that your that your strong wish would be to have it in person if we can have it in person, right? Mine? Yes. Yeah, I think it's time. I mean, that, that's just my personal hit on where COVID is and where people's energy is and, and whatnot. It, 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 it feels like that, that that's the way things are moving. Yeah. Yeah. So I would plan on that and we'll see what happens. As, as Sarah's already pointed out, you know, for the legislature to even take any kind of action on this by the by the time they take action, it's going to be almost over, but they're shouting anyway. So, you know, what it's, what it's really going to come down to is if, if our perception, meaning the town of Middlesex's perception is that there's a huge COVID risk, COVID problem, or RFP, or whatever that other dreaded disease is, takes hold or whatever it is, then if the legislature gives us the opportunity, we might pivot. But I think it's probably unlikely, but who knows? I don't think any of us know. It seems all of a sudden more people I know have had COVID in the last two weeks than yeah. have in a long time. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on. You at it? Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Somebody said to me the other day, we've either all had it or we're all going to have it, one or the other, sooner or later. So It's not it's uh, doing to us yeah. what it was doing before the uh, vaccine. Yeah. Uh, you have anything else for us? Um, Liz, do you think that uh, um, uh, you, in the past you have been super uh, thinking leadership on a meal? Do you think that that's something you could be talking with the school about? Yes. You don't have to go on record. She's hiding behind her computer. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, we'll 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 talk about it. We'll talk about it. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Yeah, you know, it wouldn't be town okay. meeting without the dinner. Come on. Does not sound fun. <laughs> She's mumbling. I know she did. When was the last time I cooked a meal for 100 people? Long time ago. Before COVID? Probably. <laughs> oh, whatever. 2019. Yeah. yeah. Or no, 2020. OK, we thank you, Susan. In 2020. Thank you. And then, like, the next week, COVID hit? Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. We were all really worried. That's right. So Chris has wandered in at the perfect time. Good evening. This is an assemblage of Vermont personalities, that's for sure, if they look here. How are you guys? Good. How are you? So I had decided, with a little gentle nudging from our town clerk, that my opinion was we shouldn't send out the ballots. The first thing I, first information I get when I show up at the meeting is that she's flip-flopped and now she's gone, she's gone the other way. And I don't know how the other, other board members. She went the other way? Feel. Yeah. So yeah. I did. Well, first of all, Randy brought up a really good point while we were talking about, um, you know, just voter access. I do think it's going to be very confusing for voters to get one ballot in the mail and then they're not going to get a career center ballot. They're not going to get a town ballot. They're going to have to call to get those ballots, but they won't be able to vote on the budget until they go to town meeting. 
it's all really convoluted. Yeah. On the other hand, the Washington Central budget is huge, and it's the biggest part of the, I think, you know, the most voters who can vote on that's really important. But then, the most, the key thing is, it's not gonna cost the town anything if we do it this way. All I have to do is send a checklist to Rosie LeCare. Mm -hmm. She'll send it to LHS. LHS will send it to a place in Ohio. Ohio will print out the ballots. Hopefully this time some of the addresses won't be screwed up and send them to the voters. So we won't have to do anything on our end and no one will have to be reimbursed any costs or postage on our end. The ballots come back here or do they go to some central they come location? Back here. They come back here, and we still have to transport really them to, to address this. And the so school, we have to the do that anyway. School pays for the for school pays for everything. So another. So it's coming out of my left pocket, not my right. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a problem, there's the guy you can talk to. But let Thank me you. ask this question: How Thank do we communicate to the voters? Because I would not. I would think that's the only ballot. I wouldn't even right. know that well, there that was, was another the, election. That was my original opposition. Right. So how do we communicate with them that there are other ballots that they need to vote on and that they need to come so to we'll town? So what we'll do is we can. Call. And that was my original. Or my original school. concern was voter confusion. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. I mean, voters have been getting ballots now mailed to their houses for two years. So now it's like, wait, is there? So I think what we can do is we can have an insert added that says. You know, to Middlesex voters, you know, everybody should get asked for their ballots. But here's one thing I think that the Wizards were the school. I think that's going to cause problems for us to just say to this company out in Ohio, well, take those Middlesex things aside and put this, that's going to be an added cost. That's labor, you know. If the school district would consider saying, here is a school ballot, would you um, please note that these may not all be all the ballots that you are voted for. Please call your town clerk and then just put a list of town clerks down there or, or email addresses. That way, everybody Why did they it. want them mailed? Well, ask this guy. Um, for broader distribution so that people okay. vote. Because it is, it's a big budget and it spans all the towns now and to give everyone the opportunity. The same reason we, we went to um, mail-in ballots a couple years ago because that was COVID, certainly. Um, but greater participation, um, kind of the same reason we went to Australian ballot 20 years ago. Sarah mentioned that, and I, I remember that town meeting here. It was a close vote, but one of the um, advocating points was more participation um, because people can come, they don't have to come to the school meeting, they can just come in and vote on the budget. And that really, I think, carried the day, even though it was really, I it was like a 10, 20 vote difference between the two, it was really, really tight vote. Um, but that was a, a big point uh, that people were making. And, and, you know, they do still have to come if we're going to have a, um, an in-person town meeting, which I hope we do, um, just because I think you lose stuff on the uh, Zoom that you don't really see in person. Oh, that you see in person, you don't see it on the Zoom, and, and your body language and interaction, because you can only see one screen at a time, I guess. Um, but uh, just to get as many um, folks to vote as possible. And if we That's were to do vote. our own mail-in voting for our own ballot, that'd be a separate mailing in a separate envelope. Well, we could. <laughs> so what we could do is we could say, you board, maybe at your next meeting, could decide to mail everybody a town ballot. But all they're going to get is town officers, town officers. and the, the zoning regulations. Budget and the special articles still have to be on the floor. Right. So can we change that? can't change it today, sitting there. You can, you as a select board could put a question on the warning for the March 7th meet, town meeting and say, shall we, just like what Chris was talking about right. when they switched over. To Make everything Australian ballot? You can put that That's question good. on the, on the, on the, and then, and then they can talk, talk about it at a town meeting by all the people who attended in person. <laughs> Remember we did that, there was a vote, there was an Australian ballot. Oh, I'm oh, just, just feeling tied. Tied. Bad. Exactly. Just about every year we talk about it. Well, you can't, it's not actionable unless it's on the warning. Right. So, if, but you're the select board, you could decide to put that on there. And it really makes no difference whether it's Australian ballot or whether it's in person. It actually does. Make I like sense. town meeting. I think it's a great community event. Yeah. I think it you brings great value getting members of the town together. Absolutely. But the truth of the matter is, the countervailing argument is a couple of hundred folks right. make the decision. And yeah. You know, the truth of the matter is our town budget is relatively small mm -hmm. compared to the school budget, and now we're gonna have the the other budget, the career center, career center, career center, center budget. Um, but it's still real money, and it's a great concern to, to people in town. And it is discouraging to me that 
you know, now, now, now people can request a ballot, they can vote early, they can, you know, whatever, but they can't vote on the budget unless they show up at town meeting. But didn't COVID-19 prove that it didn't make any difference? Everything passed anyway. Well, it makes the difference in terms But how many, and I don't, I don't know the... We had a great participation by Australians, yeah. much better than in-person meetings. I think, I think for me, I, you know, I, I know a lot of people like the in-person town meeting and, and oh, yeah, whatnot. Like watch people, right? For me, it all come, it comes down to the additional participation that we, those people that can't make it or, or for whatever reason, they participate when they get mailed a ballot versus when they don't. Um, and at the end of the day, that's that's what I support is just increased activity and and participation through the process. Mm -hmm. so, so here's the countervailing argument, though, and I remember all the years going to those school meetings after lunch when everybody is like this. They've been through a three-hour town meeting. Now they're at the school meeting, and there's hardly anybody there. And then and then we go to Australian ballot, right? Great. So the school has informational meetings. Well, you talk about nobody there. There were years when I was the only person from Middlesex who was even at the informational meeting. So yeah, people may be participating, but they're not listening to presentations. They're not asking questions. They're not. They're not participating. I, I don't know as if I don't know as if you know who's participating and who's not. You know how many people will bring stuff up that is talked about in a meeting like this that aren't sitting in this room. People watch these recordings. People right. people attend. They read meeting minutes. It's just because they're not physically here doesn't mean that they're not involved right. to some extent. I will. I do agree with you that I'd love to see a bunch of people here and participating and and whatnot. I mean, I, I understand that we don't get that, but I don't think it's fair to say that people no. aren't staying informed or or engaged to some extent in the process just because they're not here. You're right. So You're the right. hybrid takes care of that. I mean, I think the hybrid is really the nice balance of the two of having, like, this is great that you have the in-person meeting here, but you also have access to um, the, the Zoom participation where you can get both. Uh, and you know, you really do have that dialogue. You, you miss the dialogue, I think, if you're just going for Australian ballot. Absolutely. And, and Peter, you know, I, I only went to a couple of school meetings before it was is done, but that was a very direct opportunity to change the budget because you would make a proposal to change dollar amounts and it, it would pass. Granted, it was only like 20 or 30 people who stayed and did it, um, but it was a very direct participatory democratic act, which we've lost in a way uh, now. Um, so it really is um, preserving that as much as possible, I think, is helpful. And I also think that town meeting in person is just a unifying act. I you haven't seen people for a long time and say, oh my God, how you doing? I haven't seen you in a really long, even though it's a small town, you know, our- Maybe we could just have the meal without the town meeting. You know, it's a harvest dinner. Was, was Remember the harvest meal? dinner? Yes, yeah, that harvest was that dinner. Meal. Yeah. Those are good old days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you're right. I, th I think that, I think the, these other questions are, are bigger questions, not yeah. for tonight's discussion, but, but I think I guess we agree, I think. If we need a motion, we can do a motion. I, I'd like to make a motion. Um, and the, the we way can't make a motion. You have to make a motion. But you also, uh, Rosie, I don't know if she's, yeah, Rosie's she's still, still here. here. She's still here. She's very nervous that you guys are going to make the wrong motion. Oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> Rosie, would we make the wrong motion? First of all, no one's directing a town clerk to do anything in this business, okay? Let's just get that straight right now. <laughs> <laughs> when, when Sarah was opposing this, I was thinking coming yeah. in, Sarah, you know, the um, well-regarded Dana Carvey church lady was very indomitable, and how do we no overcome problem that? With the role and, model. <laughs> so, when so. she puts her hands on her hips like that, watch out, that's a bad sign. Yeah, the motion has to say uh, that the select board will uh, send every active, registered, not challenged voter, approves the sending a... W C U U S D ballot for the March 2023 school meeting. And it was Somebody willing to make oh, that oh, motion? Wait a minute, no, no. Now I'm now I'm confused because you just said 
<coughs> we're not doing anything. You're not directing the town clerk. So the motion we, from, from their office has said the select board directs the yeah, town clerk. Yeah, I saw that, right. All they you have, have no to do authority. is just say authorize. It's right here. Right. No, no but, she doesn't so, have the right writing in there. Oh. So why would we make a motion regarding this at all? Your board. Because we need your permission to send that out about. So all, and it has to be oh, all five towns. Have all to five agree. towns have to approve. Okay. And, and, but I, I agree the motion is oddly worded because it's saying that the town of Middlesex will do it. And I think we modified the language a little bit so that it's the town of Middlesex uh, will approve the Washington Central Uni Union Unified Union District to send this stuff out. Yeah. So that would be the modification. Okay. No, to, every to, active to every not active registered, not challenged voters. Right. Right. Is that okay. right, Rosie? You don't need registered. Just active, non-challenged. Okay. But, but yeah, that's good, Sarah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moved. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Liz moved and Bill Chris, thank you for yeah. coming. I'm it's always really good to see you. Articulate <laughs> motion. I'll stay. Always good to see you too, Rosie. Nice to see you, Peter. Thank you. <laughs> Why does the town have anything to do with the school, anyways? Well, there's there's the real question. Yeah, the ultimately, real question. ultimately, <laughs> the legislature needs to act. It's my understanding. Why so that ask the, Rosie? She just she just answered this for. There you go. Okay. And Peter's right. The legislature needs to take some action. Back when uh, the school mergers were all happening, the Agency of Education and the Secretary of State's office didn't get together to create the statutory authority for the schools as new municipalities to have their own elections. Therefore, it fell back to the towns because um, towns had election officials and the newly merged schools did not. So you basically voted to have a school clerk take care of all of that for you. And that's why I'm here tonight. So um, I've been assured by lawyers at the Agency of Education that it is their plan to get in front of the legislature this biennial and get some of that housekeeping as you will taken care of so that it's not so much of, so that the schools can act on their own a little more. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> well Any explained. Other questions for me while I'm here? I think we're all set. Does anybody have anything else for Rosie? Yeah. Thanks for coming. Or Chris, can we roast Chris a little more as long as we got him here? Oh. Bye Rosie. Bye. I think we're all set, guys. I mean, let's hope for leg legislative action to get the town out of this. I mean, because because it, it's got to be it's got to be threatening to know that all five towns have to approve this, or you can't do it. I mean, that's. I mean, if you if you, if the towns have got to do it, why can't you do it town by town anyway? I mean, we, we didn't invent the, the system. Um, okay, vocational because there's 18 there. And you know you'd have to go to 18 different towns, and right. the chances of that would be harder. Somebody's going to vote it down. Yeah. yeah so. so, any idea, any thoughts about what the increase in the school budget's going to be? Um, I've heard hair scary numbers. What have you heard? I, I, you, 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 you say first. <laughs> I'm trying to think if we've discussed, I think I've discussed this in executive session, so I don't think I can, but um, they would be substantial numbers. I heard, the board, the board is, I heard in the 20% range. No, no, no. No, no? no? I, yeah. Good. What, what is it that you read in the uh, newspaper stuff that there's a surplus in the education fund, but that won't, and, and the governor wants to use that to, to bring down uh, for property tax, but it probably will never happen. Uh, 63 I, million. Huh? 63 million surplus. What, yeah, but it's not going to, they're not going to use that to uh, to uh, defer taxes, if you what, will. What, what, I thought that was originally the intent, was to try to. I'm only reading it, maybe. <coughs> I read it. So what it said is. It was it, the article that was in the paper the other day. I read, well, the, same, I read the same thing. Yeah. 
said it probably wouldn't. The governor wants to governor wants to use it to reduce reduce taxes, but the education department doesn't. Doesn't. Right. Oh, I, I don't know that. I don't know. Did it say that? Did that's it say that's it basically what it said. It, it didn't, said it didn't it really was, give any explanation. It didn't, right. Okay. But it said, just said that we're the governor go wants to go with the education. About, right. Well, well, that's where I read the 20%. Yeah. That is not a number that's even close to being on the table. Well, thanks. Okay. Good. I can tell you that. I mean, dealing with a lot of factors in terms of inflation yeah. and. No, we're going well, we're to struggling. This was our budget I discussion tonight. I mean, we're struggling with frightening numbers. Yeah. So, anyway, thank you for coming down. You're welcome. I'm, 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 stay if you, that's okay. Please You do. are more than welcome to stay. Yeah. We, we welcome citizen participation. <laughs> oh, and we're ahead of schedule. We yeah. are. A well run meeting, wouldn't you say? I would say so. All right, Liz, thank you. Treasure report, Dorinda. I haven't got one. Randy shaking okay. his head. Yay! Yay! I can get out of here and go to see you. Okay, woo. woo! Now we're really ahead of schedule. Woo. Approving minutes of the November 15, 2022 Select Board meeting is their motion. Yeah, did you see that I corrected them? Yes. Sorry. Yes. I'll move. Second. All in favor? The, the, uh, correction, was, the correction was the budget yeah. carry number for the fire department? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. It was like 9,000 versus 95,000. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's a little budget. Motion passes. Thank you. So, uh, orders either have or will be signed. Uh, is there any other uh, business to come before our meeting before we go into executive session? I'll just Quick quickly give an update on the um, grant that I applied for. Okay. Um, did you get an email that comes through that says that the grant was a, that the grant was accepted into their system? I didn't get it. You probably should. You know what? Maybe you didn't because it's like an old email or something. I'll have to check with Jenny. Anyway, it was submitted. I think I applied for like 25 something because of the match. It has to come out a certain way. Um, and I just got an email back from Dave McGeeta, and he was like, oh, funny you should ask. I was just wondering where that contract was. So he's going to follow up with them about uh, signing the contract. But um, the budget um, that, yeah, so anyway. Um, Liz, can you just refresh our memory yep. about where, what entity is? This is through um, uh, the Municipal Planning Grant, ACCD. Okay. So we'll find out in... Um, February. I think it's February 1st that they let you know if you've been awarded. It was a good grant. Sandy Sandy and I worked on it, and she also had someone else look at it, and um, VAA was really helpful with the budget. So if we don't get it, it's not because it's not a well-written grant. I think it's just, of course not. It's just competitive. So, so can I follow up on that? Mm -hmm. um, yesterday at that session, I did speak with Brian Swell with uh, BGS. Yep. Um, he did clarify that it does not um, pertain to new construction projects. So this is the five hundred thousand dollars that I emailed you guys that copy. Did you guys get that? So I, that's the same I, thing, right? I did. Yeah. So I, I spoke with him yesterday. Um, they currently have RFPs out with some vendors for um, full energy analysis mm -hmm. that aren't isn't just limited to the building's thermal shell. It includes things like. EV charging ports, so so seeing what the electrical capacity of the buildings are and things like that. That's at no cost to um, the folks that are coming in, and that's prior to being awarded uh, a five hundred thousand wow. dollar or up to a five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollar grant um, for the actual work. Yeah. Um, so that's something that we should follow up on. Yeah. Um, I did send it to VIA because that's something that I want them to like look at to see like what aspects I mean that would be phase two that's not this phase right now but just to have it on their radar because I can't remember if in that proposal it talks about, at all about funding sources for how to pay for their proposal you know when they present the different options if there's a piece in there about ways to pay for it yeah so I think other proposals so what I talked with him about was he said follow up with those guys sooner than later mm -hmm. um, you know, because obviously the assessment comes before being awarded anything. Right. Um, and I did tell him that we were working with a firm to do an analysis of, and I explained the different options and whatnot. So um, I told him I might connect 
you or somebody okay. that that you delegated to connect with them. So, and my understanding is they're trying to not make this really hard for people to apply for, but my but I didn't look at it closely. It wasn't clear to me that was the five hundred dollars specifically only towards these energy efficiency things, or could it be that you know you have to you know rebuild an addition that that has you know energy efficient heat pumps and blah 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 that the cost can go to that as well so as far as the addition to an existing building he didn't have a clear answer on that except for the fact that if it was a total new construction it wouldn't apply but there was there was some wording and some part of the conversation was that were it sounded like if let's say we had to do structural repairs to a roof to increase the snow load capacity of the roof that those costs could be included in that in that it's, overall it's award. A big, it's a I think it's going to be a very helpful yeah. funding source. So a large funding source mm -hmm. if if we were to go with renovating this. Yeah. And we have to think about that when we're making, making that, that decision. decision because this is this is big money specifically towards yeah. renovating municipal buildings. And the other thing that I learned yesterday is that uh, a bunch of these different pots of money that they have um, can be stacked upon each other. Yep. So that's good. Um, if, let's just say, A and R had something that pertained to the scope of work that we were doing, and we were awarded this BGS thing, they could stack on top of each other. And if there was a match to one, then. Mm -hmm. Not all of them are able to be used as the match, but a lot of them are. So I bet they'll have a webinar training. Did they talk about that at all? They often do with those grants. Yeah, they didn't say anything about that. That's they've kind of been doing a tour. Okay. Uh, Governor put together this capital for a day event. There's another one coming up January 23rd, I think, in Orange County. Mm -hmm. um, I can let you know when that okay. is. Um, but basically, they've got a panel of folks that are there fielding questions okay. from folks in municipalities and stuff like that. Okay. So that might be good to yeah. And you said you have the name of that person that Yes, I okay. I took his business card and he actually gave me a one pager with a little bit more oh, good. description that I've got at the office. I brought it in hoping to catch you. But okay. All right, cool. Thanks. Let's find that money. Yeah. Okay, anything else anyone? Okay, so we need to have a uh, quick executive session. Is there a motion to go into executive session? Yeah, we need to. Okay. Well, go ahead. Good night. Thank yeah, you. you can leave. Have a good night, Chris. Yep. Thank you. Bye, good night, Chris. Chris. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Hi, guys. It's on the amended agenda. Bye, bye, bye. Susan. Be in touch. Bye. I'll move that we uh, move into executive session.